I never thought we ever needed a pro variant in the ROG phone series, but here we are. My name is Ashad. You're watching Track and Tech English, and this is a detailed review of the ROG Phone 6 Pro, the very first phone with the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip that is in our hands right now. We've tested it out, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts with you because. Trust me, this chip is going to make phones more exciting in 2022. And you know what will be more exciting is if you guys hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Now before we move on and talk about the Phone 6 Pro in detail, let's talk about the differences between the Vanilla Phone 6 and the Phone 6 Pro and there's not much to talk about. Now, the first thing you need to note is that this one comes with 18 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage and the Phone 6 comes with only one variant which is a 12 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. Now, the other important difference is when this thing lights up. Yes, you get an OLED panel on the rear which you can of course customize to your liking from the Armory create app itself now for example when you hit the power button on and the screen switches on you can see that there is a specific animation even for the oled panel on the rear in fact even the dare to play led that's out there you can change the colors on it but you cannot change what's written out there so that you're stuck with that now coming back to the system lighting once you've actually entered armory create you can edit the lighting from here directly and you can see the kind of colors that can be changed on the dare to leave logo out there and apart from that of course the oled panel on the rear is called rog vision you click on it and you'll notice how there are different animations that you can keep for you know if you get a call or when you start a game stuff like that now obviously another distinction between the 6 pro and the 6 is going to be the price which we'll talk about at the end of the review but yes 6 pro will be more expensive now talking about the snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 chip inside the rog phone 6 pro it's really good so good that it actually makes all the snapdragon 8 gen 1 phones that launched in the first half of the year Absolute. Here's proof. Now, starting with the basic synthetic benchmarks in Antutu, the ROG Phone 6 Pro with 8 Plus Gen 1 actually breached the 1.1 million mark in scores, and of course, the Geekbench scores are much higher than Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. They're almost breaching, uh, you know, 4,000 mark in the multi-core test, but. more importantly the throttling performance or you know the fact that the phone doesn't throttle that much is absolutely crazy now i ran the 40 core test on cpu throttle for 30 minutes and the cpu stability that the rog phone 6 pro returned was a mind boggling 85% the best i managed on the snapdragon 8 gen 1 was on the samsung galaxy s22 ultra at 78% and every other snapdragon 8 gen 1 phone i tested was anywhere between the 60 to 71% mark now that's not it in 3d mark wildlife stress test i got a stability score of wait for it 97.6% that's as good as many mid range chips out there because they don't have to push for performance and even the best loop score was more than 10000 and i got a peak fps of 78 fps and the battery drop was just 7% And in the test the phone also went up to 48 degrees from 33 degrees which is a rise of about 15 degrees here's to put things into perspective most Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones that we've tested lost at least 20% battery life and gained at least 20 degrees in temperature that's how good TSMC's phone nanometer fabrication process is compared to Samsung's uh, technology now what Asus has also done and why you get such good uh, you know thermal performance is because you know the soc has been moved to the center and the split cell battery is on the either side of it and when it dissipates heat out uh, to the metal frame it sort of gets hot the metal frame does get hot but it doesn't get too hot and this is really good performance and this is performance that i'm talking about in x mode on Now obviously all games run at max settings whether it's Apex Legends whether it's BGMI whether it's Call of Duty Mobile you get the best graphics on it unfortunately of course 90 fps is still not unlocked on uh, you know BGMI or Call of Duty which is something that should happen i i think it's more of a dev issue than the fact that the you know processor cannot do it so we'll have to wait and watch if that happens but i played a lot of sessions of Apex Legends on the phone and such good stability 
almost consistent 60 fps performance you can expect uh, without the phone heating up too much so you can play for longer durations and expect it to run at almost 60 fps stability now i did mention x mode on the rog phone 6 pro but you know what there's this nifty little gadget that asus sells separately and it's called the aero cooler 6 active system and this one enables something called the x mode plus because this cooler can actually cool this device down really really well in fact even right now it is extremely cold to the touch now obviously you can also tune the leds on the aeroactive cooler but very importantly you also get four extra triggers on this particular device it's just nuts now, but one thing I noticed with the triggers themselves is that I'm somebody who's not a four finger, uh, you know, clock gamer. I am more of a two finger gamer. So I, and, and, you know, I play a lot on consoles as well. So I was actually using these triggers this way. And in that case, what happens with the ROG Phone 6 Pro is that it's actually not very comfortable and you don't feel uh, that, you know, it's planted in your hand and it feels like it might fall out. So the ideal way to use it would be like this, where you use this as the L2 R2 button instead of l1 r1 which would obviously be mapped to this so but anyway you get aeroactive triggers on these sides as well again for gaming the rog phone 6 pro is you know absolutely kitted out you can map so many buttons you can do so many things with it it's just a gamer's paradise through and through now obviously if you're playing competitive gaming that might give you a competitive edge and maybe you won't be able to do that uh, if you're playing esports but then again if you're playing with friends flex it all right, let's talk a little bit about the design of the phone itself. It's very similar to how the ROG Phone 5 and the Phone 5 has actually looked. You get this extremely big, heavy 200 and I don't know, 30, 40 gram weight phone. Of course, it's going to be heavy and you get a camera module which also juts out from the rear. It's also pretty thick, but it's made entirely of glass and of course you get a metal frame, but there's no Corning Gorilla Glass protection on the rear, but you do get Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protection on the front. Now, one great upgrade in the design of the ROG Phone 6 Pro is that you get support for IPX4 rating which is why what I noticed is that now you get a proper Type-C port on the right, the second Type-C port on the left edge and a Type-C port at the bottom. Now this used to be pogo pins earlier and uh, there used to be like this, um, you know, a gasket on top of it but that doesn't exist anymore and you get, you know, bezels on the you know, top and the bottom which of course is because it's a gaming phone and there's a proper stereo speaker setup also on on it now talking about that stereo speaker setup it's mm, how do i put it it's oh my god it's fantastic guys especially in outdoor mode in fact one of the things that i didn't like about the outdoor mode on the rog phone 3 and the 5 is that they would sort of have you know when you switched on the outdoor mode you know that the audio quality has also degraded but that doesn't happen with the rog phone 6 pro thankfully because even the bass continues to be extremely tight it's dynamic it sounds very spacious it sounds it's really, really good. In fact, just take a listen for yourself. And of course, if you're talking about audio, you do get a headphone jack at the bottom. I tried my Moon Drop Blessing too, as usual with it, and it was fantastic. ROG Phone 6 Pro actually supports high-res audio as well, and there's supports for Dirac as well. So all of that is great. This is going to be a great multimedia consumption phone, especially for audio. And I'm saying multimedia because now is the time to talk about the display on the phone. Now, this is, of course, a very tall, massive display, and it's an OLED panel. Uh, it's got 1 billion colors, of course, and it's got support for H. HDR and it has a refresh rate of 165 hertz and you know what in the software Asus gives you the option to actually switch between 60, 90, 120, 144, 165 whichever one you prefer so that's actually a very very good thing and of course there's a smart switch as well in fact one thing I love about Asus's phone displays is that they're entirely color accurate you get a delta E of less than one which is definitely a very good thing the display of course is a very good looking panel you get HDR support on YouTube but one of the the things that we noticed is that you do not get HDR support on Netflix unfortunately because it doesn't seem to be whitelisted on this and we have no idea if Asus will actually whitelist it in the future so we'll have to wait and watch if that uh, ever happens but 
uh, the display experience is very very good on this phone <laughs> let's talk about the cameras on the phone of course you get a new sony imx 766 50 megapixel sensor you get an ultra wide angle camera you get a 5 megapixel macro and you get a selfie camera on the front all of that is great but temper your expectations this is a gaming phone it's not meant to take great photographs because it does take good photographs in daylight but not the best now one of the things that you also need to know is that the primary camera does not have ois so in low light it sort of does falter a little bit and you have you know phones in the mid-range that do low light performance better we took a few shots with the asus rog phone 6 pro in the night and what we noticed in the night mode is that there are a lot of artifacts there's a lot of noise and the one big problem with the night mode was that it completely uh, you know compared to the non-night mode picture you can see that the colors are are completely bungled up. In daylight shots, it does a good job at dynamic range. The colors are really good too. And uh, when you actually take pictures of people, the facial tones are very, very good. In fact, selfies, the facial tones are fantastic and it is extremely crisp as well. In fact, I even like the ultra wide angle camera. It's, uh, it's actually tuned very well. And now the problem with uh, the primary camera is the portrait algorithm. I don't think that it's been tuned well because the edge detection looks off sometimes and there seems to be some sort of artificial sharpening that's happening as well. Now talking about videos using the front camera, you can shoot 1080p 30fps videos only, which is of course a huge letdown. Looks good though. And using the rear camera, you can shoot uh, up to 8k 24fps videos and you can also shoot 4k 60fps videos and you can shoot 4k 30fps HDR videos. The video quality actually does look good, especially in HDR and you know, I think ASUS has done a good job of it. And one of the things I like about about the ROG Phone 6 Pro's video recording is that the audio quality is actually very good as well. Now I'm recording a 4K 30fps HDR video on the ASUS ROG Phone 6 Pro. Coming back to the point that this is a gaming phone and you shouldn't expect great cameras. They're good enough, they will serve the purpose when you need it. But if you want a phone in this price range, a proper flagship phone with great camera performance, then you have to look at other brands. You have brands like Samsung, Apple making phones in this price range. Now, of course, on the ROG Phone 6 Pro, just like the preceding ROG phones, you do get this overdone ROG theme on the phone. Of course, if you don't want to use that, you can definitely use the basic stock version of, uh, you know, almost stock version of Android 12 uh, on the, you know, ROG Phone 6 Pro, which is definitely a very good thing. Now, when I checked, this is also running the April security patch. So it's a couple of months behind. So hopefully we'll get the security patch updates on time. Now, while that's about security updates, as for the, you know, software update cycle and the security update cycle, you can expect two years of software updates and two years of security updates as well. The software experience, of course, is very, very good on the ROG Phone 6 Pro. It's clean, it's neat. It doesn't have too much bloatware either. Now talking about the ROG Phone 6 Pro's battery life, and there is such good news for flagship Android phone lovers that I'm so happy to tell you guys that the 8 Plus Gen 1 does wonders with power efficiency as well. It's not just very powerful, it's also very power efficient. Now, of course, the ROG Phone 6 Pro has a 6000 mAh you know, split cell battery inside. Now we tested it as our primary device with the SIM card inside in a region where there was absolutely no network and yet it was trying to latch on to network. The display was always at 165 hertz and the brightness was at maximum, which means we were pushing it and we got a screen on time of 6 hours and 38 minutes. Trust me, if you keep smart switch on, you can easily expect one and a half days of battery life, like without a doubt, and you can get about eight hours of screen on time. Easily, trust me. In fact, both Sajin and I were laughing about it because this battery wouldn't die. We actually wanted it to die and it wouldn't. Uh, the battery life on the ROG Phone 6 Pro has improved by leaps and bounds. And I'm presuming it'll be as good on the ROG Phone 6 as well. Now, when it comes to network connectivity, you get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and you get support for over 11 5G bands, which means that a, you know when 5G comes to India, this phone will be great for it. And of course, if you're taking it outside India also, it should mostly connect to a lot of 5G networks. Now, when it comes to 4G connectivity, you do get 4G plus carrier aggregation as well. It works really well. The network performance is really good. The earpiece quality is also very good. No complaints whatsoever. As a phone, the ROG Phone 6 Pro does a good job. So that was a full review of the ROG Phone 6 Pro. Now, the ROG Phone 6 Pro is obviously going to be really expensive. Now, I want to talk about the ROG Phone 6. There's not much of a difference, only the fact that it comes with 12 GB to 56 GB of RAM and there's no OLED display on the rear. So I think that could also mean that the battery life could be even better. 
Now, the ROG Phone 6 is going to be priced mostly around the 70,000 price range, if my guess is correct. Uh, and uh, you know what? That is going to be expensive uh, for a lot of folks. And at that price, what the ROG Phone 6 Pro does really, really well is performance. And the performance is so good that if you are genuinely a very serious gamer uh, when it comes to mobile phones, and I really don't want the PC master race to be commenting, oh, how serious mobile gamers. <laughs> no, that's that's really bad. Because there can be very serious gamers. Because the Apex Legends port on mobile is great. Call of Duty Mobile is great. Call of Duty Warzone is coming soon. Uh, there is Diablo Immortal. There are so many good games coming out now and pushing the limits of performance that you could see yourself using a phone like this. And if you take part in a lot of esports competitions as well, the ROG Phone 6 Pro should definitely be in your uh, you know wish list. And of course, even if you're a streamer, this phone will be fantastic because obviously the battery performance also is really, really good. Now, obviously, this phone is targeted to a niche and it's going to be more expensive this year. So that's one of the things that you guys need to consider as well when you buy the phone. But yeah, I mean, even for that price, I think that it does a fantastic job of giving you great performance and great battery life. Now that is what matters the most to a lot of gamers as well. But if you're someone like me who also values camera, then the, this phone might not be for you. In fact, I would wait for an Android phone with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 to come soon. I would take a hit on the performance and maybe a little bit on the battery life as well if it gives me great camera performance. And that's why, that's exactly the reason why I am actually waiting for the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. By the time this video goes live, uh, you know, we might already know a lot about it. So I am excited for that phone. But for the gamers out there, this is also a great phone. All right, so that was my detailed review of the ROG Phone 6 Pro. I hope you guys liked it. And, you know, if you have any more questions, doubts, do let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to take them and help you guys out. All right, that's it from me. Until next time, keep tracking and stay safe.